So, hello. Hello, hello, hey, hello. Hey. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm fitting it back. Sorry, I forgot <laughs> to mute my other computer. Always little stuff, always little stuff. <laughs> And uh, so, and I forgot to remove the banner as well. We have started. Okay. <laughs> hey, okay, again. Hello, hello. So, um, yeah, uh, welcome to the to Meet Meat Pie. So, it's in the middle of the week, uh, in the middle of the day. So, now it's lunchtime for us here uh, in UK and in yeah. Dublin. And uh, so, first of all, I think uh, we can, uh, you know, start to um, maybe talk about uh, the news and uh, afterwards we will have uh, the interview with Adam. Uh, so Adam will be live with us today, which is great. And uh, you can actually uh, ask him things in the chat, but I can't guarantee uh, he will see it, but I will try to pass on the questions to him. And uh, so without further ado, I think I would try to uh, share my screen to start the news. And here. So I think uh, this week is, has been a crazy week and um, yes. we all know that, you know, uh, there are things happening in the States. And hello, hello. Oh, uh, uh, Jack Mac. Hey, hi. Hello. Uh, I see your chat. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, first of all, I think uh, we before we go on any tech news, I think uh, this is more um, important uh, that, you know, um, we we deeply concerned about um, what happened in the U.S. and totally we kind of stand with, you know, uh, the minorities uh, group, uh, you know, the African-Americans in America that, uh, you know, they need to be treated uh, equally and, uh, you know, the police brutality need to stop and uh, racism need to stop. And uh, anything to add, Lace, about this? uh well it's yeah like it's it's a very it's a very sensitive subject and it's a very tough time for for everyone but especially for black people i would say um to be honest with you i watched the video um george floyd's video um the the actual like killing of him and the the image cannot get out of my head so yeah i think I think that the thing that we should all be taking from this is that, well, we need to stick together and we need to help as much as we can. And um, for us that belong to the tech community, uh, we can, the, the only thing that we, the most effective thing that we should be doing right now is sticking together and donating and being active on Twitter and being active the way that we can be and trying to support the victims of all this and well and hope that things will get better soon yeah so uh i yeah this is the thing that i found you know the python software foundation make this statement uh totally you know uh, it just represents uh, the the community uh you know is really uh, stand with the the you know uh, minorities in in America and also worldwide as well of course and uh, yeah so that's why I I kind of I want to talk about this uh, first before any technical mm -hmm. news so also I think there's another thing uh, from uh, from uh, Lace about this so, yes yeah. so um the, the, there's been this discussion of um how we can help and what we can do and what is the what is the the way that the community in general the, the people who are not black everyone else how, what we what we can do to actually help the community and what is it that is possible to do and those guys from the YSYS are hosting that meetup on Friday and that's exactly it so the, the, the aim of that meetup is to bring the black community leaders together and have a discussion about how the tech communities should be can and should be helping uh, the Black Lives Movement uh, right now. So if you can, uh, please do register. Please just just be part of it and listen and trying to to be behind it because it's it's a moment of crisis and we need support. We should be supporting and we need support as well. Yeah, good. Uh, yeah, totally totally and 
So uh, with something more lighthearted uh, about your Python, um, we <laughs> always talk about your Python. Um, the schedule is published because it's happening in July and we are all hyped about it. And uh, it's, it's very cool that it's the first year that we have these like virtual setup and we have you know, speaker, like it's actually more diverse speaker because we have speaker around the world to join us. And uh, I, I like, cause I'm in the community, I see like, uh, you know, submissions and actually this is like public now. So you can see all these schedules. So we have speaker actually from like, from the far east, you know, um, or from the states and um, yes. it's- We yeah, have Guido really cool. joining us as well. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know like how active he will be in the chat, but like, I think uh, it's good that, you know, he's like part of the, the party. So um, also I talk about conference. We have Alaconda Corn uh, today that is has just been started. And uh, well, if you don't know, Alaconda is like a distribution of Python that includes a lot of, um, you know, uh, data science uh, libraries that's also open source. And they, well, they provide like a, a kind of a, a free distribution for individual users. So uh, their conference uh, also have like a lot of, you know, different tracks about like technologies, uh, machine learning, data science, if you're interested. Um, that, you know, I don't know whether you can still join at the moment. But uh, yeah, uh, well, it's, it's always like a free multi-day. Okay, so it's a free conference. That's better because like uh, they they also uh, like they move virtual. Kind of uh, made a decision to decision to move virtual. So now it's a free conference online. So maybe yeah, maybe you can just sign up and join. I don't know whether they are still like you, maybe the button is still here. Maybe you can still register. So <laughs> yeah, oh, it's not closed. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> well, next year. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I was looking oh. right now. I was like, oh, maybe I can get go to a conference today. Oh, but that's tutorial. Tutorial is today. So maybe like maybe tomorrow you can still join the, the conference tomorrow. Access now. Yeah. So oh, maybe it's like it's just free access for. Uh, so I, I won't spend too much time diving into this. And yeah, and there's like also all these, uh, you know, speakers. OK, that's it. I, I don't want to, you know, um, go too deep. Uh, all right. And there's some Django news. So uh, yeah, today is kind of like a, a Django um, kind of uh, addition today because we'll have Adam with us in a few minutes. Uh, but okay. you know, uh, we have some Django news as well. So um, Lace, can you? Yes, of course. So yes, yeah, so Django just released their, their just put out the security releases today. So that blog post that Chuck is showing us right now, it was published today. And uh, yeah, so they are they, they uh, strongly suggest everyone that uses Django to update as soon as possible because there's some potential like leakage um, mem memory cache keys on the on the the previous re release that were fixed on this on the security one and well no one really loves having their their private data leaked from any web application so yeah just so you guys know just um update your django please. yeah so yeah like because all these technology are always like same story you know we always need to like kind of keep an eye on it keep track and like kind of do security patches and uh yeah so because django release it so you should totally update it <laughs> yep yes. okay so i think uh, that's it for the news i think we are quite ahead of our schedule but actually we could spend more time with adam so that's a good thing so uh so let me try to introduce him in the chat because uh, this is kind of <laughs> again this is kind of like new to me that new technology and the first time we have a live guest so bear with me and let's see if i can add adam hey adam you're live Whoa. Hello, hello there. Thank you for having me on, Chicken Nice. <laughs> yeah, so I'm excited to have you as well. So uh, first of all, I think, you know, I always do this with all our guests. Uh, I would like, you know, to ask you to maybe give an introduction uh, to the viewers that, you know, maybe, you know, um, they, they, they're new to Python, so they don't know much about, you know, anything happening in the Python community. So uh, maybe, yeah, give a self-introduction so we know who you are and uh, what you're working on. Okay, sure. I'm Adam Johnson. I'm, uh, I guess I'm known because I've been working with Django quite a lot. Um, I've been working with it since 2012, so nearly eight years. Um, and I'm one of the Django core developers, or I became a Django core developer in 2016, 
We recently actually dissolved that term as like something of power. We actually have different roles now in the organization. Um, so my role is a member of the technical board, basically. Um, so I was voted onto the technical board in the 2.2 release cycle, like a year ago, and I've been voted on again for 3.0 and 3.1. Um, the tech board is basically for deciding any like deal breaker or like major feature changes to Django. Um, yeah. Um, yeah that's... I'm also, I'm working now as, a, I, got, I got my notes, sorry. Um, I'm working now as an independent consultant on Django things and yeah. recently wrote my first book. Yeah, that's super cool. And uh, yeah, I think like writing a book is always a challenge. So we will we'll dive into that later because I, yeah. I can never write a book. I think I've tried, but I don't think I'm I'm that good. <laughs> but I anyway, think everyone has a book in them. Yeah. yeah, but anyway, I think I would ask a fun question first. So if you okay. need to use an animal to like kind of describe, you know, Django or like a analogy to Django, what 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 animal would you pick and why? Okay, I've got a two part answer. First. <laughs> Is that Django has an unofficial animal mascot, and this is the uh, the uh, Django pony, which you can see at DjangoPony.com. But it's not really a pony; it's a Pegasus, uh, so oh, it's a winged horse. Um, and I don't think there's really much logic behind picking it beyond its cuteness. Uh, it's like a very cute picture, uh, but I guess it embodies some of what Django is about, which is like it's quite multifunctional. It can fly and it can walk, well gallop. So there's like yeah. two modes of transport in one, batteries included. Oh yeah, I found it actually, I just Googled it and I have seen that before and I didn't know that it actually is the mascot. So, um, but but you, as you said, it may not be the best. Uh, yeah, it's very yeah. cute, but it may, may not be the best description. So, but, I think we're uh, gonna have some t-shirts with it on soon. So it'll become <laughs> a little bit more official, but currently it's just like um, Jeff Triplett and someone else set up this website a long time ago at a Django con. Kind of comes and goes. But um, now you can pick, like, what would you if choose? I, if I were to pick, so I thought about this a bit in the shower. I picked the rhino. Uh, why the rhino? The rhino? Mm. So rhino's been around the watering hole for some time. Like Django is quite an old framework compared to many other new technologies, but it does know its way in and out. Um, you might think it's a bit lumbering and slow because it's big, but actually it can go fast when it needs to. Um, it can talk to the elephant which is like a PostgreSQL mascot. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and it just generally knows a lot about the area. Plus it's a, a kind of a real world unicorn. And yeah. everyone wants, everyone likes unicorns. Yeah. I think that's, that's very good. I, I didn't think about all these things about rhinos actually. So yeah. yeah. And, and like, I, I kind of like, I haven't seen a real rhino before. I think like, cause uh, by the way, if you didn't know, like Adam and I kind of uh, had a trip before with a bunch of friends uh, to Namibia and we see a lot of animals, but not a rhino. Yes. So. Pike on Namibia last year. Yeah. <laughs> and um, okay. So let's, talk more about Django. So um, I think, okay. first of all, let's talk about why people need to love Django, right? So if you have to pick like which three, three features that you kind of think that, you know, is the, the you know, the, the star, like the, the key of Django that make it stand out uh, as a framework. And also, um, so like what would be best, like what project that I should totally use Django that would make my life easier. So what kind of things I need to use Django? Okay. Uh... Let's go in reverse. So what's best to build with Django? Pretty much any website or API, I would say. Um, that the, There would be some limitations there, like if you're trying to build something really high performance that opens a lot of web sockets, and Django doesn't support web sockets yet natively, but it does have some cutting edge plugins you could install. Um, so maybe it can just about work there, but for most websites, I think, you find a way to do it in Django. Um, for three features that would stand out, um, I'd say like compared to Flask and some of the other more micro ones, it's very much batteries included. So that's like one big feature in one. Um, it's a bit like the Python standard library. You know, if you want to open a CSV or a zip file or something, Python has a way of doing it. Similarly, if you're building a Django website and you're like, oh, I need to add a redirect here, or I need to add an RSS feed or um, look at all my models in the admin. That's, it's all there. Um, 
It also has like reasonable security defaults. You don't need to go and install something else to even worry about that. Like we saw the release today, we have a security team constantly trying to fix things. Um, uh, so that'd be like one feature, which is the fact that it contains a lot of features. Um, <laughs> um, the second would be the Django admin. Like a lot of people use that to access their data from web browser without having to really build much of anything. Um, there's not really a competitor to that in the Python space that I've seen. Um, and it does surprise me like how far some businesses actually go building the infrastructure on the admin because they can put it up on day one and then like years later, everyone logs into the admin to perform different business tasks. Sometimes it goes beyond the design, but it works well for them. So it's like, it's good. Um, yeah, people build crazy stuff that they're yes. not supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> I guess people always do, right? Um, it, no API has ever used how you expect it to. Um, and and uh, the, the third feature I'd highlight is the async support that's um, there in Django 3.0. Django 3.1 that comes out in October will have a lot more of it. Um, mm -hmm. So like Andrew Godwin, who's the main contributor there, uh, he's really pushed this forward. He wrote channels, he wrote the spec for asynchronous apps in Python, and that's ASGI. And now Django is pretty much the only framework to support both the synchronous old WSGI framework and the, the newer asynchronous ASGI framework. Um, I think most users won't need to touch on it, but if you ever need to add like a WebSocket to your app to have like a live chat feature or something like that, then um, Django should be there uh, for you to do it. Yeah, that's super cool. Cause like, I think a lot of the thing, like so far my experience is that like async the thing is uh, something that happened a lot in uh, web design cause everything, you know, you have multiple users and everybody's doing thing at the same time and there's so many things happening on your browser. So yeah, that that's cool. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Uh, but, you know, I always, you know, try to be balanced, balanced. So, um, I, yeah, of course, like, you, I know that you would tell me, like, a million things about why Python, like, why Django is amazing and good. Uh, but I will also know, uh, is there anything that Django is not that good and we should avoid if we really rely on that? Um, yeah, maybe I could, I could think of three things. Um, so the first would be the like if you search for things related to Django, because it's been around like 15 years, you can come across old Stack Overflow posts that seem to answer a question, but are now like completely aged and wrong. Um, it's not really like a cleanup process. I don't think many people go through Stack Overflow and editing old answers to correct them to be better. Um, so there's quite a lot of like almost misinformation at this point. Like you might find some stuff, copy paste it in, doesn't work. Um, so you, you have to be careful like how old the information you're reading is because Django has evolved and will continue to do so. Um, and, and like related to that is that there's quite a lot of old packages out there, like plugins and stuff. If you're going with a, like a new framework, like framework like Starlet, um, pretty much everything you find as a plugin is gonna work straight out of the box and can be great. Um, whereas, you know, there's like 15 years of people building stuff, putting it on PyPy, not maintaining it for another five years. And you come across it, you're like, this would solve my problem, but it has the exact same problem with Stack Overflow because it would be out of date, not work or something. That apply, apply to anything actually, like, uh, yeah. it's mm -hmm. like if you put some Python 2 code on Stack Overflow and expect it to work in Python 3, it would not. <laughs> yeah, that's very mm -hmm. true. Yeah. There's so much Python 2 code out there still, right? Yeah, I, I can't like, I was like, why you give me an answer about Python 2? I don't care about it anymore. It's dead. So they just but, made a separate language on, on Stack Overflow. Yeah. The worst is when you're trying to, when you're trying to debug stuff and you're looking at Stack Overflow and no one tags that if it's Python 2 or Python 3. So you're not really sure. So it's like, I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> why? <laughs> Maybe right. someone should just go through and delete all the Python 2 of Stack Overflow since it's no longer supported. <laughs> but uh, I would be more, you know, um, kind of chasing after the answer. So anything in Django itself that you think. Okay. You know... <laughs> so I think the one, one like really common feature request is the support for non-relational databases. 
um, like MongoDB, or especially in MongoDB. Um, I think relational databases are flexible. They can be fast to develop with. I can see the appeal of using them. Like, especially you've got Django's over here, it provides all this web stuff. Here's my MongoDB. I can just shove any data into it and I'll have my website in no time. Um, but there's, I mean, there's not really anything stopping Django having some kind of uh, MongoDB integration. Um, but I don't, I don't think there is one. I think part of this lack of support is like lack of developers who could do this, wanting to do this. Um, like anyone who's thought for a little while about data integrity or things like that will, will prefer the features in Django generally, like using a relational database, adding foreign key constraints, only allowing certain types of data to be stored in columns, um, things that MongoDB uh, like can do, but it's very common not to. Um, so like instead of that, you can use like um, JSON fields, which are supported on Postgres in Django 2 plus and 3.1 in October will support um, all database backends storing JSON in a field. So that should fill that use case, but I think a lot of people just like they've learned some MongoDB and now they want to build a website and we don't support that. Yeah. <laughs> Like uh, I think, in my opinion, JSON, uh, you know, is uh, is more more reliable format. Like, it's, yeah, it's like a uh, shameless advertisement here again. Like uh, Terminus DB, all the <laughs> query transactions are in uh, in JSON format. So it's, uh, it's, it's we just, we want it to be more secure. Like not having any injection kind of uh, risk. So yeah. Okay, so I think it uh, doesn't sidetrack uh, from your, your answer. So I think, I bet, yeah. But, yeah, <laughs> I think there could be like similarly Django support for Terminus DB, but it's like a graph database, right? Yeah, so it's a graph it database. Won't, so... It won't fit so well with a lot of the yeah. things in like, Django models and forms. So. Yeah, but maybe in the future, you know, yeah. so you see, both of us are evolving. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, message me about it. Yeah, like if I have some bandwidth, I'm totally happy to develop something to like, you know, connect the two, but uh, I'm too busy at the moment. <laughs> anyway, so um, so let's talk about the community. And um, so I know that, you know, in London, uh, where I'm, we are based actually, like uh, there's mm -hmm. lovely, lovely London uh, Django user community there. And also there are like Django coins everywhere. And I'm sure that in other cities there are meetups. So uh, how, how is the Django community like? Is it any different? Like, you know, because you obviously you have been involved in the Django community. So, like, if you compare the Django community itself to the you know wider uh, Python community, is there any like subtle difference, or is it you know they're more or less you know Django people are Python people? So, <laughs> um, I would say more or less Django people are Python people. Um, I do see data scientists tend towards Flask. Um, to build websites. So perhaps they're underrepresented in the Django world. Um, I mean, part of this is because they aren't building a public website. They're just building like an API across their pandas data manipulation um, that's internal. So they don't really need many of those security features. They you know it's accessed on one network port by one service. Um, I, I guess that's the main difference I, I see. Like. There's, it's really, really diverse in the Django community. It's something we celebrate. Um, all kinds of people at the Django cons and the Django meetups. Um, yeah. So uh, what just to let me add a little bit of like, you know, the, this question mm -hmm. is like, what meetup you think like, which, you know, I, I assume you have been to a lot of, you know, Django coin and Django meetup. So which meetup or which conference do you like the best? which uh, city or <laughs> country or, you know, <laughs> um, yeah, difficult question. It's a difficult question. Of, of the Django conferences, I really enjoyed the Django Under the Hood series. This was three conferences in like 2016. No, it was four, 2014, 15, 16. So it was at the final one that I had like made some contributions to Django and like got it, meeting the, the core team, as they were called at that point. And, and got really involved. And that's when I got voted in as another core member. Um, and there was something special about that. And it was like a, quite a technical conference. It's definitely not for beginners. Like if you, you'd had to use Django and would look at the internals of Django um, and it had qu 
quite a nice vibe. A lot people were gathered from across the world in Amsterdam. Um, it got cancelled, unfortunately. But if it started again, I would definitely be involved. Um, yeah, of the conferences that are going on now, I think I've only been to DjangoCon Europe, and my plan was or is to visit all three Django cons this year, which would be Europe, the first one in Africa and America. Yeah. So, well, um, I, I hope that like next year it will be all back to yeah. normal. So <laughs> we'll maybe we'll even have more conference, like we would have both online and the physical one. So who knows? Mm -hmm. um, so um, you have, well, obviously like you have been to a lot of places, uh, both, yeah. you know, for a conference and both for maybe your personal trips. But uh, is there any place that or city or country that you want to visit every year? <laughs> um, I don't think so. I, I don't think I've ever actually visited anywhere two years in a row. Um, it's not to say I don't like some places more than others, but yeah. Um, I, I just want enjoy traveling widely. And perhaps I want to visit every country in the world eventually. Um, yeah, like I, I had great fun going to uh, the PyCons in Ghana and Namibia, and I was really looking forward to going to DjangoCon Africa, which I hope is still on in November. Um, yeah, but I basically like to visit everywhere once, and then then I'll decide. Then you can ask me. <laughs> will you will you think about you know like there's a place that you want to go you haven't been? You're just like okay, let's start a Django, you know, meet up with DjangoCon there, so I can go. <laughs> Antarctica. I'd love to go to Antarctica. Just experience Ooh. something completely. But I think Antarctica, you have Basically. to bring your uh, audience with you. Um, yeah, I was sure. going to say. Get on a ship, go down there, yeah. stay for a week, and come back. <laughs> and we we can have a, we can or we can have the penguins to attend the, uh, the conference. <laughs> High penguins. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Enough joke. So um, so I think like. Because I have tried to learn Django before, I have you know attend some Django girls and stuff. But uh, I would say that because I, I I can't really say because I only do like a Django girl. Um, so uh, is Django beginners friendly? Is it easy to learn? And uh, who can learn Django or like who, like for example, uh, uh, let's say a, a working you know a mom who is like need to take care of the kid and also you know like let's say needs to stay at home, can she learn Django like? how and uh, who who can learn Django? That's a very good question. Um, I, I think Django is like notably beginner friendly compared to, I don't know, maybe some less mature frameworks that have had time and energy to put into this. Um, it's probably most people's like first step in making a website with Python, um, like Flask would be the other one. Um, like Django has like an official tutorial that is like really well trodden ground, as it were, it's like there's um, any problem you might encounter, probably someone else has as well. And the answer is hopefully there in the tutorial in some form or quite easy to Google and find an answer. Um, we have an active forum as well, where you can find answers from people. Um, there's also like a lot of other free materials out there. There's a couple other tutorials um, that are pretty high quality, which are the MDM ones and the Django Girls, as you mentioned. Um, uh, there's websites like learndjango.com, which is done by the Django Software Foundation's treasurer, Will Vinson. So there's like a lot of learning materials out there. I think anyone should be able to like build a first website with them uh, in some way, at least. Um, yeah, it could do some things better, though. Yeah, so uh, Lace, I know you are learning fast. Do you want to learn Django as well? <laughs> I I do, I do, but I confess that um, after um, talking to you, after learning that the learning curve for Django is a little bit more challenging, a little bit more steep <laughs> than for Flask, I'm going with Flask on first, and then I will go I will get a visit on, on Django. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think, I think we could do a bit better there, like having like some kind of shallower on-ramp, like Build a website <laughs> in 50 lines of Python would be better. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking about building an API, you know, so I look at Django and I look at all these tutorials, like, I don't need the admin, I don't need this. I was like, okay, if I remove everything, so what do I have to with? Like, is it Flask or? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but yeah, it, it depends on your use case. If you are building something, you know, that is, uh, you know, 
is a web, you know, the whole kind of ecosystem and all these things. I think Django provides you with everything. So that's a better choice. But if you want quick and dirty, I think maybe we should choose something else. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, like for me as a newbie, what sounds like is that Django is for web developers and Flask would be for everyone else. I, I mean, that's definitely the perception. I, w I wish we could change that a bit. Um, like it, it's really intimidating when you like run the start project command with Django and you get like 120 lines, most of which like imports other things. And you're like, whoa, there's all this stuff going on suddenly. Um, but it doesn't need to be like that. Like you can write a Django website in 30 lines of Python in a single file. Uh, I've read a blog post about this and I, yeah. I wish we had like maybe a first tutorial that just does this all in one, one, 1000 word document or something. You could create this website. It does something fun. You're like, okay, I could build a JSON API with this. It's quite similar to Flask once you've done that stuff, but then it has all this stuff in the box that you like, Flask, you're never going to find out about without like searching a lot of stuff on the other resources. Yeah. So the idea you're giving me now is how do you feel about making, uh, maybe giving a workshop on deploying a Django website with 30 lines of code? I would love to do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. an idea I've been milling around with for a while. <laughs> by the way, Lace is uh, organizing, uh, you know, um, uh, Python Ireland. So uh, I think what is in her mind now is to think about having you as a speaker there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so I think, you know, learning, I learning Django. Screen, getting brought into yeah. all this other stuff. <laughs> yeah. So learning Django, you know, is, is actually like quite cool. And I think like where well, Lace would be interested as well. So how, you know, like to learn Django and I know you have a book. So is, is that for beginners? Can we read that? Or is it more for more um, advanced users? I'd say it's like for slightly advanced users and you would need a Django project that's like a certain size. And um, so my book is called speed up your Django tests. And you're probably only thinking, oh, my tests are slow. If you've got enough tests that you notice how long they take to begin with. Um, yeah, yeah. So do you have a book with you right now that you can show kind of uh, how it looks like, it's, or it's an ebook only, I'm afraid. Oh, it's an ebook. So, okay. I actually, I do have the link. So uh, I could actually uh, showed, I wish I would actually post the link uh, in the, in the chat and uh, you know, in the, in the description afterwards as well. Cool. So um, can you tell us a little bit more like uh, what, what people can find in the book? Like uh, what, what, you know, questions does it answered? <laughs> sure. So it's, it's uh, really intended to be like looking at Django tests or like unit testing in general, why we do it. And then like how, how to do it best in Django through this lens of like making them faster. Cause I think a lot of people like they adopt testing through some practices that their team is already doing, or they learned from a book or a tutorial. Um, and it gets you so far, like you can repeat these techniques over and over, but you might not understand like what's going on under the hood. And it's normally, oh, the tests are slow. That is that first trigger to like, okay, let's try to speed them up. Let's try to understand what's really going on there. I tried to write it so that like a junior developer could approach the material. Cause I think quite a lot of junior de devs, like they join a team and then the boss is like, welcome to the team. Can you speed up the tests? That's your first task. Um, like quite often teams are sitting with like tests that are problematic in some way or another, whether it's slow or like buggy and like a good on-ramp project for junior jabs to build something without necessarily affecting the production website so much. Yeah, so it's gotta be like a kind of a guidebook, like a holy grail, like, you know, a Bible for work. <laughs> if you're using Django for work. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't compare <laughs> it to the Holy Grail or the Bible in any <laughs> Right. So that that's super cool. I think that's really, really helpful if you're using Django and want to make it mm -hmm. better. Um, either for work or for your other projects. So I think uh, we are kind of really, really uh, ahead of time today because this is the first time we try to have a uh, live, you know, a guest live which is uh, very cool. And I will want to ask Adam to stay a little bit longer because we're going to talk about some uh, Python libraries and maybe he could actually uh, give us some insight about them as well. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. So uh, let me kind of see if I can share my screen again. Uh, I, I don't know how that works. And oh, 
Yeah, okay, it's, it's there. So you can see that. Oh, actually, I can show you the uh, the book. Before, like, yeah, this is the book, right, Adam? So this is your book. That's my page, lovely purple. Oh, the, the Pegasus hasn't loaded. Oh, the Pegasus. Try, try reload it. Oh, yeah, maybe like. I have a wonderful illustration of a Pegasus that I got from an artist on the internet. Oh. Not loading yeah. at the top there. Oh. Yes. Okay, so now you know, like, uh, so, yeah, this picture. I don't know why, but maybe, yeah, some problems but anyway and um we well the first i think the first first library that i want to talk about would be um you know a something related to pandas and this is a pandas side table so it's actually for this is it's a small small thing that lets you uh, preview your data in a better format that you could see all these um you know your data kind of in a you know in a kind of a, you know summarize it in a better format uh, so it's easier to see so I think for data scientists, it could be quite useful. And uh, yeah, this is the problem that I had when I was working in data science that, you know, um, sometimes like I really want to see the data and like, and you have to type a lot of lines with pandas to fiddle around to see all these statistic properties of the data. But uh, with this side table it actually shows you quite, you know, informative stuff, especially when you're working with, you know, percentage and all these like accumulative things, then instead of you have to port it, uh, to have an insight, you can just like have a look uh, with side table. So it's this tiny thing that I think it could uh, help you if you're dealing with a lot of these things in your um, daily work. So that's uh, actually something you could uh, have a look. So it's uh, I think it's uh, on PyPI as well. Yeah, side table. This is one of them. And there is another one that we're going to talk about. So this is um, time machine. So Adam, uh, actually you created this time machine, so can you explain? <laughs> <laughs> yes, so this is like a big yak shave from writing my book. Um, I was writing a section about like how you can mock the current time during your tests. Like if you're testing a feature like, oh, you know, this product should only go on sale after it's on sale date. You probably want to create that product and then go forwards in time in your program, in your tests um, to that date to check that it is now on sale. Um, so normally people solve this using mocking with unit test.mock. Uh, the problem with that is like you target a single function, but there might be several functions in the call tree that check the current time at various points. Um, and these functions are littered throughout date time and time modules in the standard library. Um, so there are some other libraries already that like help you mock all of these functions at once and like move forwards and backwards in time. The first one we're seeing scrolling past that is freeze gun. And that's very popular. And then a faster version of that is lib fake time, but it comes with a bunch of like uh, caveats to using it. Um, like it can't, doesn't even work on Windows, for example. So I built one that tried to combine the best of both, and I call it Time Machine. I was quite surprised the name wasn't taken on PyP actually, because um, yeah. it's such an obvious name for something that travels through time. Because I think uh, last time Lace found DeLorean, but not a uh, yes. Time Machine. So yes. they. They use DeLorean. <laughs> DeLorean is a good library. That's like a date time wrapper. It doesn't actually travel your program through time, like you might expect. Um, but I did come up with that name for this library, and I was like, oh, no, it already exists. So. But yeah, that's, that's cool. Time yeah. Machine, I think, is a very good name. I would love to take it, but you already taken it, so. <laughs> <laughs> I am I am wondering though like I'm I didn't even I'm sorry but I didn't even under, I didn't quite understand what's the difference between the time wrapper and the actual time machine would you mind just explaining a little bit for me again okay please? sure so you've got some code that calls like date time dot now for example to check okay. what the current time is or like the time module time dot time gives you the current time as a unix timestamp um but when it comes to test that code, you might want to test it in the future or the past. So Time Machine transports your Python state to the future or the past, or like, like whenever you want to go to, to test it. So you might okay. have this thing, but yeah. yeah. So it's more like a simulation kind of, kind of um, uh, tool. Exactly. Sort of... Okay, perfect. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, Lace, do you have anything you want to talk about, or uh, you're you're very uh, intrigued by this time machine? And <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I was going to talk about a um, 
library that handles images today. Then I got distracted actually playing with the library and never came back. <laughs> okay, so what's the name? I can actually like put it on now if you have that. Pillow. That was playing pillow. With pillow. Uh... Yes. Pillow is great. Like pillows, yeah. Pillow as in, yeah. So I was playing with Pillow beforehand. Uh, let me see if I can find the link for you. Uh, actually, I have it on PyPI here now. 7.1.2 is the most updated one, yeah? Right. Yes, yeah. it is. Perfect. Uh, yeah, so I was, I was just like playing with it a little bit because I wanted to see how Python... It, it was actually my first time playing with libraries that handle images on Python. I wanted to see what what were the like what were their highlights what is that that, that everyone talk, keep talk, keeps talking about and i like the conversion there is um, a way of converting images like the image format that is actually quite easy it's like a line of code and that's it um i struggled a little bit with importing the images to the to the the program so i then i was able to figure it out and the thing that like the main thing that I thought was quite cool was that when I, I was first learning how to program like in general I did this course that in JavaScript that you'd learn how to like make images black and white or make them blurry but like hard coding the image changing each and every single pixel of it so like a for loop that would go through every single pixel and change those pixels uh, but then this pillow library gives you functions that can blur your images or make it black and white or make it red or whatever and i thought it was quite cool like it's just simpler it's not really a novelty but it's interesting if you're thinking about doing anything with images or like making a website kind of like a snapchat or instagram kind of website or something like that yeah that's that's cool actually i think i have uh, used that in the background like i think something depends on it or like maybe psychic image or something so but or oh i know i was like doing some new network things like uh, try to do some mm -hmm. computer vision thing <laughs> and uh, yeah it, it kind of helped me to deal with the image input so yeah that's good django cool. also uses it for the upload image functions yes <laughs> oh really <laughs> yes yeah so this is a very uh it's, I think it has been there for a while and it's uh, widely used. So that's great. It's, it's, a, it's a good tool. And then I found this as well. Like I just put it on the chat on on Twitch if you if you want to open up. It's it's fun more than anything. Um, okay. Are you guys familiar with the uh, No Pleasures? Uh, no um, Pressure? <laughs> yes. Yep. The cover, the style of cover. I think the Active Monkeys did something with that cover. Um, so there is a Python library, a Python script that changes any image into that kind of style. And I was oh, also yeah. playing with that because, well, I don't have enough work to do apparently. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so don't don't let uh, your employer hear that because they will give you a lot of work. <laughs> 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 right. Okay. So yeah, people can uh, visit via the link and do have a look there. And um, I think uh, we are uh, we are slightly shorter this, this week, and um, we are so happy happy to have uh, Adam here with us. I think that's loads of fun. And uh, anything else you want to add before we end the program? Uh, nothing from me, apart from obviously buy my book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it would be very useful, very, very useful. And um, so anything to add, Lace? Uh, well, thank you. Um, well, Jugmak uh, was saying that she is, I was asking her if she had any questions for Adam, and she said she is a Flask developer. Exactly for the same reason that like we were talking before, it, she makes lightweight stuff. And she could not get a grip of all the features that Django offers. Yeah, um, think, yeah we are trying to have like interview with someone in Flask as well. So we can have, you know, uh, both sides of the do. picture. Yeah. Have it and, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much, Adam. And i like, I think both the viewers and we know more about uh, Django. 
And uh, I, I still love to go to the Django meetup, even though I'm not using Django, because <laughs> the Django <laughs> community in London is really lovely. If you are in yeah. London, totally, if, uh, you know, things get back to normal again, go to one of the meetups. We're you know, having them virtually, actually. So if you f search for Django London on meetup.com, you can join in every month with a virtual meetup at the moment. Yeah, but that's that's great. You know, like all the all the beers are great, all the chats are great, all the talks are yep. great. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I Ooh. think that's it, and I would just try to end this program with a banner. That see you next week. And um, <laughs> bye bye. Thank you bye -bye. for having me. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>